All right, this is the original guitar, a career stage series series uh, Telecaster, which is a really cheap guitar, which my girlfriend, who is an actual sweetheart, gifted me for Christmas like two years or so ago. And because it's really cheap, there are some issues with this guitar. Like the pots are okay, but the switch is extremely flimsy. The cap fell off like instantly. Then this thing, the bridge, doesn't work too well. You can see it right now, but for example, the hole for the pickup isn't doesn't really fit the pickup. The pick guard is extremely soft and ugly. It's a one ply. This pickup sucks, but this one is surprisingly great. And the worst thing about this guitar is probably the neck. It's really thick and chunky. I don't think it will come across that well on camera, but it's really chunky and flat. It feels more like Gibson-y than anything else. And I really don't like it. So I'm going to change the neck. But what is really great about this guitar is the body. It's really heavy and like good quality. It's uh, as far as the manufacturer states alder. I can't confirm because I'm not an expert on uh, on woods, but alder is quite desirable. It's uh, the body shape is of course vintage, so no extra bits. Um, and as you can see, I painted like an elementary school child all over it. That's the first thing I'm going to do to the body is get rid of the burst and add a forearm and a tummy cut. This is the neck. It's from a Squire Bullet Strat. Same scale, same length, but uh, same amount of frets, but um, it has a fender style radius, which is desirable to me. But you can see this neck, I got it really cheap because it's quite bad up. And the the first thing I thought to myself when I saw this was how, like how? It's not that you can just screw those things off and they are off. No, you really have to beat this up. I'm, I think the person who owned this previously, don't know, took a crowbar to get them off. So I'll have to fill in those gaps with some filler. And uh, as one notices, it's a strut neck, not a telecaster neck. So it's like a little round around the last fret. And this one is almost completely straight. Um, the length is exactly the same, but there'll be little gaps in the neck pocket. I'll have to fill those with filler as well. But first things first, let's convert this functional fully fletched guitar in two parts.
So everything is disassembled and we can start having fun. This is what the raw body looks like and as you can see I already cut into it for like piloting purposes with just a rough idea of how deep I wanted forearm and tummy cut to be, which was about one third of the body's thickness, I needed to determine the range I had to rasp away. What I then did and admittedly got carried away a little bit. So I carved out the shape I wanted and applied some more contouring cuts. They all turned out better than I expected, except for the cutaway one, which I got too steep. Remember that for later and also have a look at the humbucker, don't laugh at me now, root. At this point I didn't have the new bridge yet, but I was too impatient and took measurements from a pickup I had lying around. This should prove extremely stupid, you'll see why. But alas, time to get the finish off. As I expected, it's a three-piece body. I'm actually surprised how well the translucent sunburst hit that away I had mistaken it for a two-piece initially. The wood grain looks nice, but there are tons of flaws that were hidden by the sunburst. There was no way in hell I was going to send that off completely. I added some imperfections myself to be fair as I tried to get rid of the outer finish layer with a wire brush leaving some deep scratches. But except for like two I got them all sanded out. I also sanded off one of the neck pocket edges by mistake, not fatal but an obvious optical flaw. With all those flaws in the wood, a non-translucent finish would have been an obvious choice, but I wanted to see wood grain and flaws add character, right? So I stained it cobalt blue, my girlfriend's color of choice. Of course, staining made the imperfections even more visible, but I like the overall look. On to the next problem. I wanted a Gibson style toggle switch cause I don't like blade switches. Now go find a Telecaster control plate with such a drill hole. Mm -hmm. I managed to acquire one but the potholes are imperial as opposed to the original ones which are metric. Of course I realized that way too late and had to order extra pots. Now go find imperial split shaft mini pots. I was a tad annoyed, but I managed to acquire those as well, just the shafts should prove to be a little bit too long for the original knobs. I don't care at this point, pots and switch looking good, now they just need to be wired. In the meantime I applied boat lacquer to finish the guitar off. I would have liked to try wipe on poly but there's no way of getting the stuff in Germany without importing it. The boat lacquer was way thicker than I anticipated and cured really fast so I managed to apply the finish very unevenly in some places. It will look okay after buffing though. Alright, the neck was as expected not an immediate fit. I filled all the gaps with wood filler and glued some wood into the drill holes.
that's the body after buffing and on with the neck. I put on low and high E string to position the new bridge so that it's in line with the neck, just in case the neck doesn't sit straight in the neck pocket. The neck is straight, but look at that gap. Oh boy, I should have waited. Oh well, but the worst part is there are no top loading tele style humbucker bridges and I need to convert it to string through. I don't own a stationary drill, so I expected some crookedness, but boy did I butcher that. At some point I'll have to glue in some wood and redrill those, I'm super dissatisfied here. But I wanted to get it playable, so I moved on. The pickguard is made for a standard single coil bridge, so I have to carve some material away. This didn't prove to be a problem, I just made some cuts with plate shears, rasped the material off and sanded it smooth. The original guitar didn't have the bridge wired to ground, but I didn't want to drill another hole for the ground wire, so I just added it via pickup cavity. Testing the pickups, installing all the parts and here we go. Here you can see the full guitar in all its glory. And the last giant fail. The neck joint is thinner than the original. I need to glue in like 3 to 4 millimeters of extra wood into the neck pocket, but there's simply no way for me right now to manufacture the corresponding piece of wood. I just put a plastic neck plate that I had lying around in to get it playable, and it does work, but it's really sloppy. I will fix the glaring issues someday, because that guitar feels great and sounds fantastic. Have a listen, thank you so much for watching, feel free to scold my poor craftsmanship in the comments and take care.